audio, audio. Hey, now it's working. Sorry, guys. Oh, man, I hate when I start live streams without audio. That makes me so sad, because then I don't know exactly where to start again. Um, thank you for the, thank you for the heads up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning just a little bit to give you a little bit of an overview. We are looking at a metallic purple ground beetle. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. The species is Dysalis purpuratus. I had that written up here for a while, so you probably were able to get that. Purpuratus is what we give to insects that are purple. Um, they are regularly metallic purple. They're found in the American like in the eastern United States. Um, they can be found as far north as Michigan and Pennsylvania all the way over to approximately, I think, Iowa-ish. Um, and then all the way down to Texas. And then over to Florida and back up. So you've got like most of the eastern United States will have this species of beetle. Um, you've got... I think that I showed it at the very end, and I was like, hey, let's draw this one next week. And so, yeah, I think that it's the one that I showed at the very, very end of the last one. Um, but the last one, I didn't have it identified yet. Um, I identified it to species now, so I think that that's kind of cool, too, fairy tales. Um, what's the common name again? The common name is a weird one. It's called the notched mouth ground beetle. Notched mouth. Notched mouth ground beetle. And I made a joke when you couldn't hear me, and I said that um, I find the scientific name easier to say um, than the common name. I have a hard time saying notched mouth. Um, but <laughs> Dysalis purpuratus seems just like an easier word to say overall. So, um, so I like, I think that that's kind of funny. Um, the notched mouth ground beetles, uh, that's common name is actually assigned to the entire genus Dysalis. So there's a handful of different species that have that common name. Um, but at least it's a genus level ID rather than just saying it's a ground beetle. You can say it's a notched mouth ground beetle. <laughs> um, yes. So let's see. Okay. I think that that's where I was. Oh, um, two characteristics that help you identify it. You can see that it has a very kind of a unique body shape for ground beetles, it's kind of wide and um, convex feeling. It's uh, uh, It doesn't have like a narrow space in between the pronotum and the elytra. It doesn't have like a neck region at all. It's kind of just like flat and wide. Um, so it does have a fairly unique body shape. And then the second characteristic that's going to help you identify it um, because the body shape gets you to subfamily, and then to get it to this genus, um, you notice that the edges of the pronotum here and here are, um, they overlap the elytra, and those, um, that's going to help you get down to genus, and then to species, it's purple. That's what I kept getting when I was, I was like, how do I, how do I know I've got it to the right species? Well, it's metallic purple. <laughs> Everybody else in the genus is not. Um, and so we're going to have to zoom in on the, on the mouth of the ground beetle and see if we can determine why exactly it's called a notch mouth ground beetle. But I am going to go ahead and switch that common name out now because this one, this is my preferred name. <laughs> All right, so we have this head. I did kind of start drawing it. I think that uh, most of you are all right. We've got the head, the mandible, the pronotum. It's wide and it, it flares out a little bit at the end. When we zoom in, we're going to see many more, much more of these features. 
You probably heard me when I said that, I don't remember where I started, but the elytra is up, are about time and a half the length of the head and the pronotum. So if I take this size here and I push it down a little bit and then I add essentially the length of the head, that's about as long as the elytra are. So I give myself a little notch here and I'm gonna go ahead and just give myself a really light outline of this shape. You love it when bugs have silly common names. Yeah, silly common names are fun. Like, one of my favorite common names is the Elf Shoe Stink Bug. I think that that's a fun common name. Um, especially because they call it an Elf Shoe Stink Bug, but I don't really see the Elf Shoe, and I've talked to a handful of people, and they don't either, and that makes it even better. Because they're naming it after... Uh, something that's really hard to see. Um, most people don't see it. Mm. Oh, man. Uh, the other one that's fun is the clown beetle because they don't look like clowns. And then you do have a separation in between um, the elytra here, so we'll just go ahead and give it a vertical line. Um, these lines in the elytra, these here, we the scientific name for those types of lines in the elytra are called striations. All right, so those are little striations in the elytra. And I'm actually pretty happy. Did I give you measurements? Not yet, but I can. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, because I can't fit the entire beetle under the microscope at one time, I'm going to measure the head and the pronotum, and then I'll measure the elytra. That'll give, and then we can add them together. So from the front of the head to the back of the pronotum, it is 0.97 centimeters. So, almost, almost a whole centimeter from the front of the head to the back of the pronotum. And then I'm going to scooch the specimen, scooch, scooch, scooch. Hopefully the elytra fit, I'm going to think, I might have to turn it sideways, but yep, yeah, it fits. It fits the chips. Okay. So, the elytra are... 1.37 centimeters. Let me do a little bit of math here. We've got a, let me do that again, just make sure. Uh, we have a combined length of 2.34 centimeters from the front of the head to the back of the elytra. It's a decent sized beetle. I mean, it's not a small beetle, and it is a predator, so it has some pretty wicked awesome jaws. Let's go check them out. So this is our head. Hi, Deb. Oh, no, it's okay that you came a little late. My audio didn't work for the first five minutes anyway. And we just got the very light outline started, so we are just about to start with some of these heavy lines. I think I've got one of those silly pencils from the 90s that has all of the individual pieces. I got to sharpen it. This is fun. Okay. So. Um, and Deb, if you have any questions, just go ahead and let me know. Um, they are predatory. I think I collected this one at a black light. I think it came into the light, and I was really excited because it was so beautiful and metallic. 
All right, let's see. Right here, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna start at this U shape here at the back of the head. I think that's where I want to start. Yeah. All right. All right, so we've started right around here, and then what? Oops broke it. Oh no. Give me two seconds while I fix the malfunction. Everything's okay. We got this, guys. Alright, so, um... Perfect. Everything's gonna be okay. Alright, so right here we've got the back of the head, and then the lines actually do run parallel ju for just a moment before they get wide, so I'm gonna, I'm probably about to lengthen this head just a little bit. So they come up, they do come out, and then you have those uh, compound eyes. We're going to add those really quick. Those compound eyes are kind of, they are on the lateral of the head. We're looking at it from the top, but you can see that there's this kind of shelf on the top of its head, and the compound eyes are off to the side. Um, and that's why over here on the right, you can see there's this little bit of the head um, kind of underneath and in front of the eye. That's just like the bottom part of the head that you can see past it. To give you a little bit of a description there. Um, right around here is where I'm going to add my compound eyes. I'm going to make sure that I do round them out just past kind of where the planned compound eye was so that uh, it does look like it's kind of extending past the size of the head. And then from the inside of the compound eye, that's where that ridge is. So I'm going to take that shape and move it and, and pull it forward like this. Um, and I'm moving everything. I'm making everything just a little bit longer and that's fine. So up here above the compound eye, we come straight and then you have the uh, scape the first segment of the antenna. So um, the first segment is um, narrow at the base. It gets a little bit wider at the end. And it's actually a fairly long segment in comparison to the other segments that you can see. So I'm just going to go ahead and add at least that first segment of the antenna. Um, I'm going to probably make my antenna kind of curl up and then back so that they're not in the way of this word, these words here. Alrighty, let's see. Now we've moved that forward. We have the antenna taken care of. Now there is this, um, that front plate of the head kind of, um, goes concave a little bit. It kind of bends in this direction and that's why you can see all that really cool lighting happening. Um, what I'm going to do is from the, uh, from the scape, I'm going to come out. I think I'm going to stay flat for a moment and then I'm going to try and give this kind of multi-segmented arch that comes back here and forward. So that's gonna, I, I didn't do this line really dark because it's actually not a separate plate. That's just a fold in the exoskeleton there. Um, but here, that's actually a separation between the exoskeleton plates. And then, you've got this guy right here. That's really crazy cool looking. Uh, I need to move it up a little bit so that you can check it out while I'm checking it out, too. Um, if I 
I was gonna take a ponder, take a guess as to why these are called the notch ground beetles. Um, I would say it's because of that notch in the labrum. I want to call this the labrum. It's just a very odd shaped one. Normally they aren't so large. Normally they aren't so pronounced. Um, the labrum is the upper lip. Generally it's the top piece of the mouth. Um, and then before the labrum is the clippius. That is the region that the labrum connects to. So I would say that this segment here would be the clippius. And then this one here that kind of comes up. It is almost too segmented. But it, this is just a fold in the center. And it has this notch. I would say that is why they are called the notch-mouthed ground beetles. Um, we also have mandibles. The mandibles don't look like they have very many um, teeth or very many kind of sharp edges, at least from what we can see at this viewpoint. So we're going to connect the mandibles way wide, and they're going to come in towards the center above, probably in this shape. So they're pretty, these mandibles, they are pretty wide. And then the left one is on top of the right one, so we can actually just kind of add the right one underneath in here. And I'm going to just create a, another line here in the center so that it looks like there's at least some separation in between the mandibles. Uh, the palps that you can see here, the mouth fingers, those are maxillary palps. Um, these ones right here. Uh, from what we can, we can see two segments. We might actually see three segments. There looks like there's one right here that comes out that goes one and then two, three. It might have more if we look at it from the side, but those are what we can see from the top. So I'm going to add the one little small one here and then two. And the third one is very triangular. It's really wide at the end. Two, three. All right, one more time. One, two, three. He's kind of cute so far. All right. There are also, if you wanted to get down to details, I believe that there are four pronounced I want to say that they're bristles rather than CT. Um, there's two on each one of these. So there's one on the right and one on the left. And they look like hairs, but they're more coarse and they have a socket. And so I want to call them bristles. I would believe, I would believe that they are sensory. Now, if we wanted to look at it from the side, because I know y'all like to see the sides of our heads here, um, you can actually see Morning Chaos. You can see, in this viewpoint, the labial palps. So this, they have two sets of palps. The maxillary are the larger ones, connect right, connected right underneath the mandible. And then the labial palps are connected to the bottom jaw here, and they're kind of short. They're right about here. And um, so that little segment right there is just a little bonus mouth, mouth finger that kind of does this to push the food into their mouths. And um, from this view, you can definitely tell that that eye is situated on very much a lateral kind of plate here. Okay, so now 
We are looking at the pronotum here. The edges, the forward pointing edges of the pronotum from this point of view don't look as sharp as they did previously. So I'm actually going to round these edges off a little bit so that they are not as sharp as I had originally drawn them. We're going to come up and round those corners off. Um, the, uh, the pronotum here has all of these really cool ridges and we might even zoom in a little bit because I zoomed in a little earlier and to me it almost looks reptilian a little bit. And it doesn't flare out as much as the, at the end as I thought it did either. It doesn't flare out at all at the end. All right, so we're going to we're going to be modifying the end of our pronotum here just a little bit. It's going to round out and come back exactly where we planned, just not with just without the extra little bit here. I guess I was seeing things. All right. Now, um, we do have these bottom edges of the pronotum. They do overlap the elytra here. Um, so we're going to come on down and make sure that they do not, um, make sure that these edges aren't very sharp or anything like that, but you want to make sure it is kind of knobbed down here. And then we've got this central piece here that kind of comes up. And shows off that scutellum. How wide is it at the point? How wide is it at the widest point of the pronotum? The widest point of the pronotum, it is 0.81 centimeters. Whoa! I think mine should be just a little bit wider, huh? Thank you for asking! 0.81 centimeters is very wide, especially when you consider the head in the pronotum is 0.97 centimeters. So, I was making it too narrow here. We're going to widen this out a little bit. Hey, that looks a whole lot better. Thank you for, uh, thank you for asking. Cool. That works for me. Alrighty. There's a part of me that wants to try some of that shaping in the pronotum, but I am not exactly sure how to do the lighting um, on this guy. So I'm going to give it that central, that, um, that dark stripe in the center and then maybe this M shape here fairly light and then something I'm gonna leave it kind of like that all right right there we have a scutellum The scutellum is this little itty bitty triangle that exists in between the two wings. He's cute. He exists right there. Uh, kind of like that. 
Um, and I did want to zoom in on the pronotum and show you this texture because it's really cool looking. Look how cool that is. The, the, this, this, I think that it looks almost like scales. It almost looks reptilian on this pronotum here. And if you zoom in far enough, it almost starts to look pixelated, but it's not because it's pixelated, because when I look at it under the microscope, it also looks, the texture looks like individual little colored pixels. I can only imagine that that is the uh, crystalline structures that create the metallic colors. Alright, because the pronotums changed size, I'm going to be making my beetle just a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that right now. Now we are looking at the elytra. to see where the elytra touches the pronotum first. See if there's any type of funny business happening here. So you can see that the elytra does kind of curl around. It doesn't meet exactly here at the edge. You can start the elytra just a little bit wider than the pronotum here so that it's very obvious that it's overlapping. I'm going to leave it just about like this for a minute while I get the outline of my elytra re-sketched. Um, the uh, elytra does not get wider than the pronotum here, but it does. Let's see. Maybe if I can. Needs to be wider, maybe? I'm doing this kind of light as I try and get this shape this shape correct and then we'll come back in and do striations. That's about right. Okay. I'm going to darken this up. So, in the center of this space, we do have a vertical line. This separates the individual elytron. Um, and then we've got all of these really beautiful striations. It almost looks like a galaxy. I have to agree. I love this specimen, too, because the specimens can have a variety of colors and this one has all of the best colors. It's like all of those metallic blues and the metallic purples. I mean look how cool. So on the elytra this, these, those dark regions, those are the striations, those are the stripes, and then, um, and then you can see where the, uh, the light's hitting on the, uh, where, where they're not, they're so pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and count some striations really quick. This one is interesting in that there is a little bit of like a an edge of the elytra. So right here, and I think that's what I think that's what my drawing is missing. Um, right here at the edge, it does kind of come in 
just a little bit and then you have the additional edge here and from and this space here that's actually a lateral um how would i say this like if the elytra is like this this line right here is kind of where it goes like this and there is this side edge to it um so this right here is actually an edge all right let's see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six striations per elytron. All right, so there are six striations going down. If you'd like your sketch to be, um, if you'd like your sketch to be realistic, we've got the two on the center, the two closest to edge actually meet together, so they come like this. There's one that comes all the way down. Let's see where they end. It's a little trickier to see where they end. I gotta shift it. Cool. just so pretty okay so the first two they meet up at the top they run parallel they come down and they end at the end here but they don't connect they don't reconnect back together at the end they kind of stay separate but then the next I'm going to draw the four more lines from the top. Um, they do run parallel. Let's see. Oops. One, two, three, four. So I drew the four from the top. Um, they are all separate after those first two, and the striations do go underneath the pronotum. So I just went ahead and continued them back there. But I didn't finish the ends because I wanted to go back to what this looks like and connect them properly. So these next two come down and they connect together at the bottom. And then the next two also connect at the bottom and actually create another additional little tail striation here. And that is how I'm going to leave my striations. I'm just going to leave them on the one side. Um, I'm going to do the striations on the right elytron and then I'm going to do the legs on the left side because you know me, drawing half bugs. I guess I made a boo-boo when I pinned this guy and I didn't pull the front leg forward I let it sit backward and this might be this might look odd to you and that's because the uh, the beetle is essentially trying to walk on the top of his hand rather than the bottom um, his tarsal segments are flipped upside down whoopsies that's okay So from this point of view, we can see that the uh, front legs are connected fairly well back on the pronotum here. Um, the femur from above, you're not going to see much of at all. Just pardon me. I'm going to look up one or two pictures to see if while they're walking. Yeah, you don't generally, you're not going to see much of the femur because... 
Um, it's not super incredibly long. They're connected here. They come out like this. So we're just going to give a little bit, essentially just a little bit of a stump of a femur here. The tibia is going to be fairly visible. I really wish, let's see if I look at it from this way. Alright, so that is a view of the tibia. You can see that it does have a tibial spine down there, just the one. Um, that spine is pointed in towards the body. Uh, it is narrow and then widens a little bit. The tibia can reach all the way up to about the length of the eye here. Then you've got the spine. And then, if we look at the tarsal segments, there are five of them. Just keep in mind that the tarsal, I'm just going to write its name here for a minute. Um, just keep in mind that the tarsal segments that you are looking at are technically upside down. And the way that you can tell that is if you look at this segment here, um, the flat or the bottom side of the segment is up here on the top because the, tar the final tarsal segment coming out of this shape of a, of a segment is always going to come out of the top. So that's why it looks kind of funny to me. But that's okay. So there are five tarsal segments on this leg, and there are a good number of spines here, too. So let's see. We are kind of narrow, boxing out. We're going to go one. The second one's a little bit flatter. Two. The third one, fairly round. Three. All right, the fourth segment here is an interesting one because when you view it kind of from the side, it's going to have this notch. Let me see if I can. If you look at it from the side, it looks kind of like this where there's this notch here, and then the fifth tarsal segment comes out from it here. And this would be the bottom, so it's where you've got all that friction hair and that pads. Um, and then it kind of, the final segment kind of folds out of it. From the top, it's going to look a little bit different. Um, <coughs> sometimes we call these heart-shaped segments because they are generally bilobed, and then right there in the center is this piece here that kind of comes out. Raindrop shape, two claws. <coughs> All right, for our middle leg here. The middle leg is actually positioned correctly, which is fantabulous. Somebody tell it to focus. There we are. So um, our femur is going to be coming out right around here. It's also going to be fairly short, but then the tibia is a nice length. Um, it's going to be coming out and going backwards because it is Middle legs always go backwards. You need to make sure that our insects are stable. All right. And I'm going to move my tar I'm going to make my tarsal segments come out in this direction. Yeah. That's going to be beautiful. So, uh, you can actually see the tarsal segments of this middle leg pretty well. We can even zoom in a little bit if you want. All of those crazy barbs there, that helps them, that helps them create friction with the ground. These are fast beetles. All right, they are predators. They chase their prey. They are fast. And their mandibles are pretty strong. They will bite if you try and, like, hold them in a closed hand or hold them in a closed fist or even put your finger near their mouths, they will bite you. 
<clears throat> Still five tarsal segments. Although this time, that first tarsal segment is nice and long. It's concave at the end, and then it has all of those bristles, all those hairs at the bottom to help it walk. The second tarsal segment is about half the length as the first one. And the next one is slightly smaller. See how small we need to get. And then one more. One, two, three, four. And then that final tarsal segment right here. Look how big those tarsal claws are. It's definitely holding on nice and strong. Is the femur on the second leg shorter than the one on the first leg? I probably can get you true measurements. Let me see. The femur on the front leg Uh, the femur on the front leg is 0.48 centimeters, and then the femur on the middle leg Or six centimeters I would say that they are approximately the same length so if we were looking at where the femurs actually connect underneath um, if we're looking at where the femurs actually connect underneath, this femur is going to be connecting right around here at the very base, but kind of the very center of the pronotum. And then on this one, you're actually connected a little bit lower and it's angled up. So I guess I could have represented that a little bit better. And that might be why the uh, middle leg looks shorter. And then you have some distance. So if the front leg's here, the middle leg's right around here, the hind leg is actually going to be connected, the coxa is right around here. Um, and it's coming out in this direction. And the femur on the coxa, because I already have a good view of it right here, let's go ahead and measure it. I would guess that the hind coxa is longer. Nope, 0.48. All of the femurs are the same size. That's kind of fun. I wonder if that's always the case. It's, it can't be. It's not always the case. All right, so this femur is coming out right around here. It is angled backwards. And then we are going to have the tibia and the tarsal segments. The hind tibia has two tibial spines. So we're going to start here. I'm going to just stretch this leg out. You can see that the uh, you can see that the tibia goes about to the length of the body. You might go a little bit. Yeah, it's right around here. The length of the body. Uh, 
right. And then you have tarsal segments. And I'm going to make my tarsal segments angle out just a little bit, not too strongly. And they are fairly long. And they have these same really distinct bristles that the middle legs did. Can I measure the tibia, please? Yes, I may. Yes, I can. The length of the tibia from on the hind leg. It's point. Sorry, excuse me. The length of the tibia on the hind leg seems to be 0.47 centimeters. I might move. No, it's, it's uh, 0.47 centimeters. So essentially the tibia and the femur are approximately the same length, which means that my tibia, prop, my tibia to make them more accurate should be shorter. I need to start taking measurements before I draw. <laughs> Alright, there's your two spines. And the others too. I can do that. than the femur. The front leg tibia is 0.43 centimeters and the middle leg is 0.48 centimeters. So the, the front tibia is uh, shorter than the middle and the hind tibia. You're welcome. I do what I can. Tarsal segments for your viewing pleasure. They are beautiful and long and thin and covered with these crazy bristles that help them run. The first tarsal segment's fairly thin and long. Let's see. Hmm. Now there's a part of me that wants to know how long it is, but here, let me go ahead. I'm going to take this picture because I really like this focus and then what I'll do is oh come on there it goes all right we can do this and then I can change it and not have to worry about it I'm curious how long this first tarsal segment is so that I can base all of the other ones off of that measurement and if I want it you guys probably want it too so it is 0 0.2 centimeters It is a lot longer than how I just than I just drew it. So cool. All right. The 
about like that. First one, the second one is half that length. The third one is just a little bit shorter. Four does come angled down a little bit. Fifth comes out raindroppy. That seems like they're too long. I think it might be just the last one though. Right, five segments, five tarsal segments, and then all of these bristles along the bottom. Doop 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 doop. Okay. That doesn't look bad. He's pretty cute. Alright, so that is Dicealis perparatus. Um we got a lot of measurements on this specimen. So, oh, I have, we haven't drawn the antenna yet. We've got to do the antenna really quick. Um, and I just took off the labels because I want to flip this specimen upside down and look at the trochanters. There they are. I don't know if you can see them very well. Let me see if I can... They're going to be a little bit, black beetles tend to be, where they're not metallic, they tend to be a little bit tricky. But they have this expanded trochanter on the hind leg. Ooh, check this out. Cool. How much you want to bet this is a boy? I've accepted fate that I made the limbs too long. Yeah, you know, I think that that happened to me too. I think that the, uh, that the hind tarsal segments may have gotten a little bit long, but check this out while we're looking at it. Hey, maybe I can get it in focus better and then zoom in on the computer. Um... I've ever seen this on a ground beetle before. So you remember how the the first pair the the first legs um, tarsal segments were significantly different than the second and third pair, right? The second and third pair had all these long bristles, and because we drew it, we saw it kind of upside down, we didn't really get to see the bottom of the tarsal segments up here in the front. That's what we're looking at right here. We're looking at the bottom of the tarsal segments um, on the front leg. And if we zoom in really close to right around here, that is a very dense cluster of either of seedy, their hairs. Um, but in a spe in diving beetles, the males will have seedy or hairs that are like little suction cups. They're shaped like this, where uh, let's see, they're shaped like this, where they are kind of narrow at the base and they're wide and conical, kind of like so. They're hairs that are shaped like this, and then they suction cup. And they actually suction cup to the female's back during the mating process. And that's what this reminds me of. I can't tell you that for sure that's what they're used for, but that would be my, that would be my, like, my guess. That's really nifty. Okay. Oh, we got to see that already. <sighs> Perfect. Let's go check out the antenna. Just so that you have the words for your paper, 
you have the scape, the pedestal, and the flagellum. The scape is the first segment, the pedestal is the second segment, and the flagellum are all of the rest of the segments. <laughs> um, we already have the scape connected to our head. Um, I'm just going to take this antenna and I'm going to kind of wrap it around back. When it kind of wraps back around, it comes about halfway down the pronotum, so that's what I'm aiming for. Um, we've got that segment that's the scape. We have a shorter segment that is the pedestal, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flag segments of the flagellum. So I'm just going to build these individually. One, making them narrow and then a little bit wider. Two, and then making sure that they are um, connect. Let's see. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine um, connect more evenly with one another. If you want to add that kind of detail into your sketch five six seven eight nine is nice and roundy at the end there we go I mean, ground beetles are supposed to have long legs. They run really fast. These are cursorial legs. They're not just ambulatory. Ah, <sighs> oh, bug words. I love them so much. All right, so that is our friend um, Dicelus purpuratus, our purple brown ground beetle. Um, it's a very, very unique species. Thank you so much for joining me today and drawing them with me. Let me go ahead and get this label back on the specimens. I don't forget who he is or where he came from. Okay, um, let's see. I even have this page if you want to see my... Oops, microscope's in the way. There we go. Um, this is what my beetle looks like in its entirety. I did kind of add a tarsal segment or two in there, but there is um, my sketch. I think that if I was going to change it, I might make the beetle even wider to give it space. I think that it could have been even wider. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it for sure. And let's see. There it is. All right, so um, I just, uh, as always, like to thank you for joining me and for drawing with me and chatting bugs all of the time. I, uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and drawing with me and doing all of the chatting. Um, I do want to give everybody a heads up that um, I am going to be taking a number of weeks off of live streaming. Um, I am packing and moving back to my home state of Michigan. So, um, I'm going to be back in Michigan in the beginning of November, but then I have to unpack my stuff and my collection and my microscope and get my computer set up. So, um, I believe I am taking four weeks off, and I will be back in a month, which would be November 16th. Um, just as a heads up for everybody. So I believe that I'm taking four weeks off. Um, I might be able to stretch it a little bit and come back on November 9th. We're going to have to see how things are going. Um, but I wanted to give you that heads up. Uh, I do teach on OutSchool. All of my virtual classes, though, are on pause for four weeks. I'm not going to be coming back until the middle of November. So um, if you're interested or you know somebody who likes, who enjoys um, virtual classes or Zoom classes, very similar to this, but more... Um, more kid friendly like today we talked about ants and we drew some um, 
some ants and we talked about their life cycle and um, that was a whole lot of fun. Um, so that's what I do there. Make sure you subscribe. All of you have already subscribed. I really appreciate that. You can chat with me and that's how I know. Um, and the right, that right there is a little QR code just as a mem just as a reminder that if you really have enjoyed your time here today and you'd like to buy me a coffee, send me a couple dollars, that's where you can donate to me. There's also a link in the description box directly to my PayPal. Um, at Insectopia 2015 is the year I established Insectopia as a business and um, is my tag for... Facebook and Instagram if you are ever looking for me. Trisha at theinsectopia.com is where you can email me and reach out to me and tell me all of your cool stories or send me pictures of cool bugs. Um, maybe you'll find some cool bugs while you're there. Fairy tales, that is totally the hope. So I've been living in the Philadelphia region for about seven years now. And where I absolutely have enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot, and I've moved forward a lot, and I worked at the Insectarium, and I was in a movie, and, you know, like, um, life has, has been really busy here in Philadelphia. Um, I'm excited to be moving back to my home state, and there are more bugs there, or at least I know where to find them, and go aquatic collecting, so we're going to have a great time. Um... Uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you in about a month. Stay buggy!